In this video, I'll be showing you how to paint a Chaos Undivided Demon Prince. Now, this is the new Demon Prince kit that's just come out in the Slaves of Darkness. You can build it for Sigma or for 40k. I've gone for 40k, so sit back, let's get painting. So I've primed the model using Mechanica Standard Grey. You can use black if you want. And we're going to paint the flesh first. So I'm going to take some Screamer Pink and just pop this all over the flesh. It should cover in one coat, but you may need two. Uh, but just take your time, don't clog any detail. When that's completely dry, take some Drakenhof Nightshade and paint this all over the flesh. This will give you a really nice depth to the skin uh, and really make the skin pop when you highlight it. Take your time, make sure you cover everything and let it dry completely. I've waited for that wash to dry and now we're gonna start to highlight it. The first thing I do is take a small makeup brush that's got a nice soft end like this and I'm gonna dry brush Scream of Pink all over the flesh areas. And this will leave the Drakenhof Nightshade in the recesses and give me a really nice subtle highlight. I'm gonna do exactly the same thing using the same brush with some pink horror neck. Now I'm not cleaning the brush, I'm just gonna wipe it off on the tissue and then dry brush again to make a nice subtle highlight and transition between the darker screamer pink to the lighter areas. Finally, on most of the flesh areas, we're gonna take some Emperor's Children and just use this to highlight the most raised areas. This will really make it pop and it'll give you again, nice subtle transition. Just take your time and put it on those high folds and creases and it'll give you a really nice effect. And to really make that face stand out and those sharpest edges, just take a little bit of Kislev Flesh and use this on those sharpest raised areas. This is nice and simple, take your time, but it'll give you a really nice effect. We'll block in all of the armor next, and I'm gonna use a bad and black for this. So just take your time, be careful around those areas you've already finished, uh, and work your way around. We'll do the metallics after this, but it's really important we get this down now, because it'll be easier to tidy up any mistakes later. Moving on to the gold trim then, we'll use Retributor armor for this, and there's quite a lot to do, so we need to take our time. Now, it should, in most areas, cover in one coat, but where you need to put a second on, make sure it's completely dry, so you don't run the risk of tearing the paint away. And just work your way around the model. If you're not sure, have a look at some of the box art, and this will give you where you need to put that gold trim. We'll shade all of that gold using Reitland Flesh Shade, so just paint this all over all of the gold areas and let it dry. Then what I'm gonna do is gonna find those parts that are facing down and most in shadow, and add a second coat of Reitland Flesh Shade on just to deepen the effect. When that's completely dry, I'll take some Liberator Gold and use this to highlight all of the edges. So where you've got a sharp edge, you can just use the tip of your brush to get a nice crisp highlight. And where you haven't, just use the tip again, but be more careful and focused when you're painting this. Work your way around, put as much highlight on as you want. And then when we come back, we'll have a look at that red line cloth. We'll base that line cloth with corn red. And the reason we're doing this before we do the silver is because it's underneath some silver elements. So it's much easier to do it this way around than to try and finish the silver and then knock any red on it. We'll shade that using some null oil. We don't want to use too much because we don't want it to pool too badly. We just want to get a little bit of a tint in those recesses and shadow areas. When that's completely dry, we'll go back to corn red just to highlight the most raised areas and folds of the loincloth. Next up, we'll use Evil Sun Scarlet to give a really nice punchy red highlight to that uh, loincloth. And all we're looking to do is just catch the raised folds and be very subtle about this. You don't want too much on your brush and that'll help you really feather it in to get a nice blend. Finally on the loincloth, a little bit of Wild Rider Red just on those sharp edges and also around any holes that are in that loincloth. And that'll just give you a little bit extra area of interest. Before we jump into the silver metallics, we want to paint all of the areas that we're going to give a little bit of a flame effect for. So we've got all the runes down the middle of the sword, and we've also got that chaos icon on the right hand arm wrist area. On to the silver then, and the colour we're going to use is Dark Aluminium from Vallejo Metal Colour Range. Now, don't worry if you haven't got this, you can use Lead Belcher. I just prefer this because it flows a lot better. And we're focusing on things like chains, those exposed areas of piping, and also the vents on the backpack and any other areas that you can see on the box art as well. We'll shade all of the silver areas using that Nuln Oil. Now, this is nice and simple and straightforward. The only place you want to be a little bit careful is on the sword, because if it pulls too much, it'll get some really nasty tide marks. So just take your time, put it on in nice, thin coats. And to highlight the silver, we will use Chrome from Vallejo Model Air. Again, if you haven't got this, you can use Stormhost Silver from Citadel. It's the same color. The Chrome from Vallejo is just a little bit better consistency. And what we're looking to do is catch those edges, and also any raised parts. You get a nice, subtle highlight with this, but it will really make the light shine off, and you'll be, you'll be able to see it on the tabletop. Now, there's a lot of skull and bone on this model, so we'll tackle that next. We're going to take rack our flesh and use this to base all of those areas. This is really nice, easy, and straightforward. Just take your time around areas you've finished and make sure you put on thinly. You will need two coats in some areas, but you may be able to get away with one if you're careful with it. We'll use some Agrax Earth here to shade all of that bone. Now, we can put it on fairly thick, but we want to spread it out a little bit as well. So just be careful when you're doing this that you don't make too much of a mess with it. When that Agrax Earth shade is completely dry, we're going to go back to that small makeup brush and just dry brush some Rakaf flesh over 
all of the bone areas we've just covered with Agrax Earthshade. And finally, for the bone to really make it pop, we'll do some sharp highlights using Pallid Witch Flesh. Now, we're looking for things on skulls such as the eye sockets, nose sockets, and the cheekbones, the brow, uh, and on other areas such as the teeth and the sharp claws, we're going to just catch the raised sharp edges to come together in a point. So let's paint those flamey, fiery effects. So we're going to base over all of that white we've painted using Flash Gits Yellow Contrast Paint. Now just paint this over, make sure it goes into all the recesses. Try not to spill it on other parts. Then over this and focusing on the edges, so where you've got the parts of armour on the fist and the bottom and top of the sword, we'll take some Magma Droth Orange Contrast Paint and just, again, paint this all over, being careful not to get it anywhere else. On the sword only we'll take some Bile Red Contrast Paint, again on the bottom and the top of it, and then once we finish with that we'll take a little bit of Flesh Terrors Red, which is darker again, and just put this right at the bottom and right at the top. Once we've done all that we want to take a clean and wet brush and we're just going to brush it all into each other and this will start to blend the colours together. So we wanted to do this last part fairly quickly uh, and we'll blend them all in together like this and we'll start to pick out those rooms next. We'll take some Dawn Yellow next and we'll use this to paint in the hottest areas. So we've got the inside of that Chaos Star on the hand and then we've got all of the runes on the sword. Take your time with this, make sure the paint's nice and thin so it'll flow into those recesses. Lastly, go back to Flash Kits Yellow Contrast. Now, it's really important you don't have much on your brush at all, so make sure you wipe most of it off. And we're just going to paint it over those dawn yellow bits, and you can see straight away you get a really hot, fiery-looking rune or inside of that Chaos Star as well. Where we've got some shattered bits of armour like we've got on this Chaos Star, we'll just take a little bit of Black Templar Contrast Paint, not too much on your brush, and just paint it over that top surface so it looks like you've got a really charred remain of the armour there, and you keep all the heat effect as well. We'll highlight all of the black next and we're going to use two different techniques. So firstly we're going to use some Skaven Blight Dinge on all of the pipes and any bone areas. So just take your time with this, use a good fine tip on your brush and where you've got those sharp bone areas such as the shoulder pad, make sure you use this edge of the brush and the shape of the model, get a nice crisp highlight. The next highlight is going to be with Storm Vermin Fur and we're going to focus this inside those areas of Skaven Blight Dinge and we're going to continue to build up using the shape of the model and those really sharp edges particularly on the bone area of the shoulder pad. We'll finish off that bone by making it look really sharp and the colour we're going to use this is Rack Our Flesh so we just want to focus this on the edges and the sharp ends and again we're really focused on getting a nice fine highlight here. We don't want it to be too thick, we want it nice and crisp. To highlight the armour and all the claws, the first thing we're going to do is take some Dark Reaper and we're looking to place this all over the armour using the edge and the shape of the model where we can. Now this can be a fairly general overall highlight in some areas to get some volume into the armour if you want to, but just take your time with this. If you do make any mistakes, you can just paint over it with black. Using some Thunderhawk Blue, we'll start to refine this armour highlight and again we're looking to catch the edge and the shape of the model where we can. With Chaos Models you tend not to have that because you've got all the trim around the edges. So what we want to do is paint a nice thin line inside the trim of the armour and we do this with a nice fine tip on our brush. To finish off the armour we'll take some Fen Rizian Grey and we want to make sure this is nice and thin and we've not got too much on our brush. We're just going to use this to catch the absolute sharpest edges and highest points of the armour. So where you've got the ability to pull the tip of the brush along the edges, do that. And where you've got things like the inside of the trim, just focus on those most raised areas and this will give you a nice crisp highlight. We'll quickly highlight the tongue next and we'll base it using Gene Stealer Purple. Once that's dry, take some Celeste Grey and just carefully highlight up around those raised areas, being careful not to get it on the teeth. The last thing to do before we have a look at the model is to paint all of the eyes. Now, the model's got eyes in its head, but it's also got some in its shoulder pads, around its waist, and also on its chest piece. So we're just going to use bold titanium white to block that in. For the main eyes on the head, I'm just going to go back to that Flash Kits Yellow and pop it over the white and it gives you a really nice effect. I'm also going to take a very thin amount of Black Templar and paint over the teeth because I'm not happy with how bright they are. And that's the model finished. And this Demon Prince is done, ready to cause absolute chaos on the tabletop. I'm really happy with how the model came out. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, check out how to paint a bad in here. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.